Standoff near Waco began as a federal raid 51 days ago. Like most, the news is how attorney Dick DeGuerin first heard of David Koresh. But I didn't know anything about the Branch Davidians until uh, the afternoon of February the 28th, 1993. That was the day ATF agents tried to serve warrants at their compound. Four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians died in a violent shootout. And some men lost their lives and they shouldn't have. A quarter century later, DeGuerin remains critical of how the ATF conducted the initial raid and how the FBI chose to end the standoff. I got the call about nine days into the siege. I know that David would like some legal counsel. Hired by Koresh's mother, Bonnie Haldeman. My job. Uh, as I saw it then, and I still see it, was to show that the Davidians were defending themselves from excessive force. DeGuerin recalls meeting with Koresh five times. In fact, the first day I didn't go inside. That's because the FBI told me that they were afraid that the Davidians would kidnap me. He believed it was Koresh that was most in danger. I said, it's good that you're not showing yourself at the windows because there are snipers out there and they could very easily take you out. The story that was getting out was uh, that this was th these were a bunch of apocalyptic nuts that were holed up and were all going to kill themselves. Even now, DeGuerin is convinced Koresh would have surrendered had the FBI been more patient. And they, they t said to me, don't worry, we've got all the time it takes. Day 51, as history will now record, was the last day for David Koresh and many of his followers. The FBI launched tear gas into the compound and a fire later started which killed dozens of Branch Davidians, including many children. DeGuerin says he went to the jail to ask the survivors critical questions. Was there a suicide? Was this suicide? No, no. It, we, the people were trapped inside. And I don't believe Korish or any of the others wanted to die. During a recent trip back to the property, DeGuerin took that walk on the gravel road to what used to be the compound. My boots were crunching on the gravel, but then they started crunching on a metallic sound. It was a, a, a hundreds, if not thousands, of expended shells from the ATF. And they were there. The, the evidence was still there. And still worth talking about today. I, I think the more that the public knows about how horrible what happened in Waco was, the better chance there is that something like that's not going to happen again.